Good morning, church. Got a short little text for you today, one you're familiar with. This one is in Mark chapter 2, starting in verse 23, going down through verse 28. Just something I've been thinking about this week. Jesus went through the wheat fields on the Sabbath, and as the disciples made their way, they were picking the heads of wheat. The Pharisees said to Jesus, Look, why are they breaking the Sabbath law? He said to them, Haven't you ever read what David did when he was in need, when he and those with him were hungry? During the time when Abiathar was high priest, David went into God's house and ate the bread of the presence which only the priests were allowed to eat. He also gave bread to those who were with him. Then he said, The Sabbath was created for the humans, and humans weren't created for the Sabbath. This is why the human one is Lord even over the Sabbath. I really like this story because Jesus here rubs up against a lot of the dynamics that we oftentimes rub up against and we, we seem to be particularly uh, rubbing up against in 2020. Um, we as humans, not just Christians, not just people in the Church of Christ, but humans, we love doing things the way that we're accustomed to doing things. We fall into our routines and our habits and our traditions and what we're accustomed to and we like those things to be the way that we want them to be. Um, all of my life as a minister I have been told I am a troublemaker and I will confess very rarely have I woke up in the morning and walked out the door intending to be a troublemaker at any given point. And the truth of the matter is that most of the time when I have gotten myself in some sort of hot water, real or imagined, what has happened more often than not is that I have unknowingly walked into a situation and done things in a way that it hasn't been done for the past 20 years. I, just doing things the way that I have grown up doing them, because I like my traditions, I like my way of doing things, I am accustomed to that. Why would anybody do it any differently? I have walked in and I have done things differently from the way that they've done things for the past 20 years. And of course, everybody knows the way we tend to do things is um, the way I have always done things is the right way. Otherwise, I wouldn't have done it that way. And your way has to be the wrong way because it's not my way. That's the way we tend to think about things. And that's what Jesus runs up against here in Mark chapter 2. He and his disciples are walking through a wheat field on the Sabbath, and the complaint the Pharisees had is that they were harvesting on the Sabbath. In reality, what they were doing is they were just plucking a few grains of wheat. They were rubbing them together to kind of separate the wheat and the chaff, and they were having a bit of a snack as they walked along. There was nothing untoward. There was nothing inappropriate. There was nothing unethical. There was nothing unholy or sinful about what they were doing. But it wasn't the way the Pharisees were used to things being done. It wasn't their tradition. It wasn't what they were accustomed to. And in good human fashion, in ways that I don't want to condemn because I can relate to, in ways that I have done myself, it is interesting that instead of saying in verse 24 to Jesus, why are your disciples offending our tradition or doing things differently than we have done things or going about this a different way, they said, why are they breaking the Sabbath law? That is, the Pharisees, like us, they have a tendency to confuse the way they do things with the way things ought to be. It's not my opinion. It's not my custom. It's not my tradition. It's not the way I have always done things, but it's the law. Now, before we go any further in this reflection, one of the things that we want to say clearly is that at the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with tradition. As a matter of fact, tradition is inevitable. Anytime you get yourself into a routine or a habit, and routines and habits are tr incredibly helpful 
you start to form tradition. Tradition is nothing more than saying this is the way we have always done things. Uh, in our, or even a, a way of saying this is the way we are currently doing things, I should add. In our tradition, we have um, noticed the way I said that in our tradition, we have all often been anti traditional. We only follow God. We are against the traditions of men, except for all of those places where we establish our own traditions, our own way of doing things, our own unique approach to doing the things that need to be done. And you could give example after example after example of how that works. Um, one easy example that ought to be non-controversial is that we, in our tradition, have taken a command to study the Bible. You know, we're big on the Bereans. Paul would go in to the people at Berea and he would preach the gospel to them and then they would search the scripture to see if what he was saying was true. Bible study has always been, I think, a very positive value in our movement. But we've taken that notion that we need to study the Bible and we have developed a tradition, a tradition of Sunday schools and Wednesday night Bible classes and things like that. That is a tradition of man. That is something that we came up with to fulfill a need that we saw in Scripture, something that we needed to do. And so it is our tradition to have Bible classes. And there is a reason that I do my Colossians live feed on Wednesday nights because that was a convenient night for those who wanted to participate because we traditionally take such time on Wednesday nights for Bible study. And in and of itself, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with any of, on their face, the traditions, or let me backtrack on that, there's nothing wrong with most of the traditions that we take up. Traditions can be wrong in and of themselves, depending on what they are, but it's not because they're traditions, it's because of what they actually do on the ground. But the problem is not tradition. And the problem with the Pharisees here was not tradition. There was nothing wrong with their commitment of taking the Sabbath so seriously, of being so diligent not to violate the Sabbath commandments that were legitimately placed in Scripture that they wouldn't even grab a few grains of wheat and rub them in their hands and eat them as a snack on Sabbath because they didn't want to harvest. There was nothing wrong with doing that. But rather what happened with the Pharisees and what often happens with us is that our traditions become bigger than they're supposed to be. Once again, we conflate them with the law. We move from this is the way we do things to this is the way everybody ought to do things. And so you ought to dress the way we dress because that is the only way to show proper reverence to God. Or you ought to sing the songs that we sing because that is the only way to show proper reverence to God. Or you have to do things the way we do things in whatever area because that is the way the Bible intends us to do it. And you've probably heard the stories from a while back where they used to put a sheet over the communion table. And in the beginning they put the sheet over the communion table because windows did not have glass and they, they would open the windows or didn't have screens and they would open the windows and the flies would come in and the flies would get all over communion during worship and nobody wanted that so they put the sheet over to screen out the critters and then came the blessed God given advent of first screens then air conditioners then they started shutting windows in church buildings then the sheet was no longer necessary because the flies weren't flying in through the windows and so some uh body had the idea to take the sheet off of the communion uh, table and people started getting really upset this is the way it's supposed to be done you're doing something wrong by doing this we we have a tendency to move from saying why are you doing things differently than the way we've always done them to why are you doing something wrong because you're violating God's law and here at the very end of this text Jesus gets down to what gets out of whack for us when we do this he reminds us at the end in verse 27 that the Sabbath was created for humans Humans weren't created for the Sabbath. 
That is to say that sometimes, even with the most God-ordained traditions, we get into a mindset that flips the script around. That is, we get into a notion that we were created for Sunday morning worship, for instance. And not Sunday morning worship being created for us. Now, Sunday morning worship is full of traditions. We have all sorts of ways of doing that in our fellowship and around the world and in our tradition. And a very good many of those ways of doing things are not right or wrong. They're just different between the two of us. But also mixed into that Sunday morning worship are a variety of elements that are more than just man-made tradition. We would call them God's traditions. These are things that God has set into place. For instance, we highly value partaking communion. The way we partake communion is deeply traditional for us, but the fact that we take communion is a God-given thing. The practice of baptism, the way we do it in a baptistry with paintings on the back wall and everybody sitting quietly in pews until the end and then we clap um, or we don't clap and we go, walk up and hug people that is deeply bound in tradition but baptism itself is a God-given thing singing there are a variety of ways of singing there are new songs and old songs and fast songs and slow songs and we can clap and we can not clap and we can have solos and it can be congregational we can have praise teams or we can have a song leader or we can have no song leader but singing itself the act of expressing joy and expressing various laments and expressing whatever to God and to one another in song there is something deeper than just we're making this up or this is the way we've always done things about it but in any of those cases whether we're talking about the traditions that we've come up with to implement the things that God has asked us to do or whether we're th talking about the things that God has asked us to do one of the things that we have to remember is we weren't created for those things those things were created for us and so the point of communion is not just for God to give us something to do a box to check off a hoop to jump through so that we can somehow earn his love or his pleasure but he has established communion as a way of shaping and forming and blessing us communion is for us it is one of those moments where as we tell the story of Jesus through the body or the bread that is his body broken and the wine that is his blood shed. It is one of those moments where God comes in and he forms us into a particular sort of people. It becomes a focal point for who we are and how we think about the way we do businesses. It's for us. Singing is the same sort of thing. Baptism is the same sort of thing. Prayer is the same sort of thing. And all of these things, we could say very honestly, God doesn't need us to do them. It's not as if God's ego or God's pride is going to somehow be wounded if we don't offer up praise to him. But rather what we find is that God sets these things in place so that through them we might be blessed so that through them we might be formed into a particular kind of people, these things and all sorts of other things through which God works. Communion was created for humans, not humans for the Lord's Supper. Singing was established for humans, not humans for singing. Baptism was established for humans, not humans for baptism. And so when we flip the script on that sometimes, when we start getting it the other way around, what happens is we start to become like the Pharisees. We start to use the things that God meant to bless us with as a way of actually hurting those around us, as a way of actually tearing those around us down, as a way of actually harming the ones that God intended to bring flourishing to through these sorts of things. 
And so when we get in fights about how one ought to sing and your songs are too new or your songs are too old or your songs are too fast or your songs are too slow or how dare you clap or how dare you don't clap. Did you see him? He raised his hands. Did you see her? She had a little sway in her hips. I wish Brother John would not pat his foot. When we begin to think that we are made for singing rather than singing made for us, we completely miss the blessing and we end up tearing one another down. And the same thing is true in a lot of ways in 2020. And this is really why I was thinking about this text this week. Because we face a constant temptation in this time of trial and hardship to put the cart before the horse, to say that Sabbath is what we were created for rather than the other way around as we face challenges. And so one of the decisions we have made, I think almost um, as a whole congregation, if not as a whole congregation at Fernville, is that we believe it is not wise to meet in person right now. And there are a variety of challenges that come with that. One of the things that Michelle and I and the kids have missed terribly was actually getting to see you all face to face. We live way over here and we cherish our Sunday morning times when we can see you way over there. It is one of our dearest moments of the week and we miss it a lot. But it is a time when it is not safe for us to meet and it is not born out of some fear. Oh, Rob is afraid of getting sick and Rob does not want to go through the hassle of being sick or the potential danger of being sick. But as with all things, what is actually going on here, and I think I've heard many of you express the same sentiment, Rob doesn't want to share what might cause him great pain or terrible trouble but might kill someone else. I don't want to use the way I have always done things as an excuse to harm those God intends to bless. And so we face a constant challenge here. How do we continue to honor God? How do we continue to push forward and lean into what God has called us to even when we can't do things the way that we have always done things. And for now, that looks like me preaching into a camera. Um, it sounds like us trying to sing over bridge calls. It sounds like us checking in to pray for one another and to share communion with that old grape juice and those stale wafers every Sunday morning. We can't do it the way that we've always done it. But we weren't created for the way we've always done things. Those things exist to bless us. And so we lean into the business of being a blessing still when we can't do things the way we've always done things. And all of that to say, church, I know it is not ideal the way we are doing things right now. There is nothing about 2020 that is ideal. And I feel that in my bones. And I so look forward to a day where we can see one another face to face. But we're doing a good work here now. We are doing a uncomfortable and an awkward and a painful work as we get outside of our comfort zones and we do things in ways that we are not accustomed to them but in our efforts to bless one another and our neighbors you are doing a good work my prayer for you is that you may continue to abound in good works that bring glory to God even in a year like this so let's pray I'm going to pray for you, and then we can pray together. God of all mercy, we are thankful that you work with us and walk with us even in these weird and dangerous and hard times. 
Father, there are so many things that we are finding turned on their heads that we are uncomfortable with, that we have never done it this way before. I ask that through it all that you would help us to remember the blessing that you were trying to give us behind those things in the first place. That you would help us to lean into that. That you would help us to lean into the work of blessing others even if it can't be in the way that we normally do things. And Father, give us the faith to know that you are still working with us in those moments. So now we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we've forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation deliver us from the evil one for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever amen let's remember who we are as we go back out into god's world we shall love the lord our god with all our heart with all our soul with all our mind and with all our strength this is the first and greatest commandment and the second commandment is like it we shall love our neighbor as ourselves all of the law and the prophets hang on these two commands. We love because God first loved us. Anyone who says that they love God but hates their brother or sister is a liar. How are you going to love God whom you have never seen if you don't love your brother or sister who is right in front of you? So this is the command we have from him. Those who love God must also love their brother and sister. Church, I hope you have a wonderful week. Be safe. Love people. We'll see you soon.